but it, but it's gonna end very very soon. Could I? Can you please uh, switch off your microphones? Good morning, everybody. Good evening. Thank you for participating into this new session of Plena International for the new people. Plena International is a project of full inclusion and collaboration and participation. Sorry, Natalia. Sorry, it says confirm your spoken language. Where we try to foster the participation of very people with disabilities uh, across the world. These sessions are a place to share experiences and to learn mostly about new topics. Please remember that you get interpretation into uh, English, Spanish, and Portuguese. You have to click on the planet symbol that you will see on your screen at the bottom, and you may choose your preferred language. We are going to speak about legal capacity for this new session. Can you see? Next. What is legal capacity? Is the possibility that a person has to be the owner of his or her own rights and obligations without nobody making decisions? on his or her behalf. For instance, you have the right, for instance, uh, to vote or to have a bank account, obligations like caring of your children. You have a right to have your own house, to pay it and sign the contract personally. Nobody can take this right out of you because you have a disability. Legal capacity is about using your rights and obligations, for instance, buying a house with nobody profiting from us. Do you know, did you know that we all have a legal capacity? If we all have legal capacity since we were born, we can be the masters of our rights and obligations, although some people, we need certain support to be able to use them. For instance, some people with disability need support to make decisions. Legal capacity is a right. The Convention on Rights for, of People with Disability is an international agreement that, pe that countries that sign it have to meet. The goal of this convention is the protection of the rights and the dignity of people with disability. Legal capacity, it's a right. Did you know that the convention says in its uh, Article 12 that people with disability are equal before the law? 
it says also that people with disability have legal capacity like any other person. That's why they have a right to be owners of things, to have property, to decide what they do with the money and their own uh, goods, and to inherit when the relatives die. In Spain, the law says that the people with disability have the same legal capacity as the rest of the people. The Spanish legislation acknowledges, recognizes the support that the people with disability may need for making decisions about their life. For instance, in order to uh, understand issues like health issues, money issues, and their own rights, so they can make their own decisions. Do you have any questions? So thanks a lot to everybody. I would like to uh, to make a, a comment here in Asgadon and organizations with disability in Colombia. The, we have a project with the universities that help us uh, to develop ideas about legal capacity and develop our own uh, rights and to they learn they teach about uh, law and how to use our own rights to be able to uh, be paid to our property and so on in order for it to be the more inclusive thank you Now the floor is to our colleague of the platform of representative of people with disability and development in Spain, Vittorio. He's going to tell us his experience about the support he has to develop his own legal capacity. Now the law says that everybody with uh, disability has legal capacity. But in Spain, this wasn't always the case. In 2021, before 2021, there was a tutorship where other people made decisions on our behalf. Vittorio is now into this change. Vittorio, colleague, can you tell us your own uh, experience? Thank you, Anna. Yes, of course. First of all, good evening or good morning according to the time zone or your country for me it's such a pleasure to be here with you and to have the possibility of establishing this conversation with you and explaining you how things are in spain In the middle of 2018, I got a letter from the judge announcing me the sentence and telling me about my legal personal capacitation. And he designed as a tutor my, to my, my sister, Raquel, about my property and income. Then, I had to convey a report about my economic situation and my health situation. A bit later, I tell the judge that uh, I had a, an epileptic stroke that, it, that is under medical uh, diagnosis 
and that he will be informed about all measures taken. Then, they decided that they should have uh, certain supports to write a weekly report about my income and expenditures, my personal, economically, about any money issues. Those weekly reports became then uh, monthly Together uh, with my uh, consideration, it was decided a, a weekly pay and also extraordinary expenditures. We also decided to determine a, a certain amount of money for my uh, personal maintenance uh, as a contribution to the family economy, to the household economy. With that, we were able to buy uh, computers, a mattress, always taking into account my own opinion. I choose my own uh, holidays and I am accompanied to the visits to the uh, doctor. I am supported uh, while making decisions in order to be more autonomous every day. As Anna has well said, I'm into a process of adaptation to the new legislation this process we had to do a new application with new reports and and last uh, january the 25th i had to go to the court I had this appointment at the court, and these are the conclusions. We talk about the support I needed. When the judge mentioned uh, the figure of uh, court facilitator, it looked like she didn't care. The judge acknowledged, recognized my uh, cognitive accessibility as a right, but the, that right couldn't be met or because of lack of economic means and also because of the lack of a specific legislation, although it is actually my right. The judge recognized that the support uh, I was uh, receiving until then were legitimate and that they were meant to increase my autonomy, but into the new system of support has to be always visible. It depends a lot about how uh, the judge and 
and the forensic doctor days is going. I was received in a poorly lit room, very, very dismal room. It was sad. I consider as positive the support I got from my sister in order to have a degree of autonomy into uh, decision making. The judge and the doctor were not really empathetic. They were not really close to me. As I have said, uh, the room was poorly lit and the questions and proposals of uh, possible solutions were little uh, active and didn't really weren't really pointing to myself becoming uh, more autonomous this is contrary to what uh, the judge has said that the measures he was going to make take uh, were meant to develop my capacities. He recognized that I had uh, certain rights, but because of the lack of economic means by the administration to make them real meant that uh, my rights weren't to be turned into something real. Depending also on the will of my sister, about the personal assistance. He recognized that that uh, figure existed, but since, uh, like I was saying, it wasn't regulated, so in practice, it didn't exist, this figure. They wouldn't allow me and economic uh, aid. I wasn't demanding it, by the way. I will explain you later how I would like this process to be, ideally. I think that they were really not uh, willing to create a welcoming environment for me. They really, they really don't know how to deal uh, with uh, people with disability and put themselves in the place of the other person. Another uh, shortcoming I see was that uh, because of my epileptic crisis in case it was it were an intense crisis i should be uh, given a health uh, support person because nowadays the reports and the language with the doctors are not adapted to easy reading, to simple and plain language. They recognize my right to have a support, but that I couldn't have them actually because of lack of economic means. How would I like this process Also, one of the uh, problems is, like Anna has said, uh, this is this is uh, 
working like this in 2021. It's a new thing. So they are not really trained to this new legislation. They should have. It would be good for them to uh, be trained about how to deal and how to create how to deal with people with disabilities and how to create an environment, a welcoming environment, in order to have a proper interview. Because uh, actually what I had was not a welcoming environment and no support to understand and no support to understand what was going on. How, how would I like this to be instead? It would be a system in which I would have a guarantee all the time my uh, legal interpreter that I could use in order to have a more accessible conversation and a more warm environment. I would like them to be trained by people with all kinds of disabilities because one of the pending tasks, they are trained, but not about personal uh, behavior and about how to deal with people with disability. It knows the way of dealing with people with disability is not to talk like equals. It's like they were above us. So this uh, conversation should create an environment of trust. And I think that uh, through training, they could achieve this. I think they also need uh, training into easy language, simple language. be short this is this would be a system that would guarantee myself all support that i would need in order to fill, fulfill my life project this would be a system that would guarantee ethically all the support that I may need. In order to fulfill my life project and my family's life project into a equal, egalitarian and fair society. And in order to fulfill this life project into accessible and community environments. This is uh, grossly uh, all I wanted to, to, to tell you. If you have any questions or anybody wants to contribute with their own experience or the grain of sand, this is the moment to do it. Josemi, yes, I wanted to ask you if the biggest difficulty you had, because I think 
that it, it seemed that everything went all right. <clears throat> I want to ask you, what was the biggest difficulty you had? Was it the facilitator, the person that was beside you, somehow to the person that translated everything that the judge was saying in simple language. Yes, at the beginning, they ask you things about legal terms, legal concepts, that not everybody has to know that not everyone is supposed to know. So I think that there is a need to have a facilitator that can help you to understand what the judge is saying. This was the biggest difficulty I had. And you're completely right. And in fact, I highlighted this in, in Paris, in my intervention. And the judge says, yes, that he knew that there was this figure that was a, a facilitator, this person that is a facilitator, but that, that is still something that isn't very developed here. So basically, I think that Judge has also have, have has to would have to pass some training so that he he is able to speak in a an easier language and make it simpler for us to understand. I have a question. Yes. They don't make it easy at all in the courts. If the judge could try and learn a little bit uh, the, the correct language, it would be a different. If the judges would pass through some training and they would speak in a simpler language, it would be different. Yes, exactly. That's, that's exactly my point also. I don't think they do it on purpose. The fact is that they they don't know. And they should actually go through some training and develop their own capacities and also the public administration should also do everything that's possible, everything in their hands, because it is their mission to facilitate a community that's inclusive, that's fair, and that lives in community. Thanks, Victoria. Thank you so much. Now we give the floor to Stephanie from Brazil, who's going to share the results of a project on legal capacity. Stephanie, the floor is yours. Good afternoon. Hi. So good morning or good afternoon. Good. 
I'm going to share with you my experience in Brazil. Good morning, good morning there. I'm going to share a little bit, uh, I'm going to share the slides, okay? Uh, um, can you please check? Stephanie would like to share the slides. Uh, enable the sharing, the screen sharing. You should be able to share it. You should have a little um, green box that says share your screen. I'll, can you see it? Un saludo, Alfredo. Hombre, José, buena. ¿Qué, qué, ¿Qué tal? Bien. Bien, gracias a Dios. Ay, ay, gracias a Dios. ¿Y qué calor está haciendo hoy, Augusto? Um, hi, so can can everybody see? Yes, can you see the presentation? Sí, sí. Oh. Okay, so... So I'm Stephanie. I'm here from Brazil, from IGC, is the Institute Clementine Institute, and I am uh, an uh, assessor. Uh, while I'm doing this, I've always, I've always encountered people who have a lot of friends, and little by little, we are changing that. And people are consider that we don't have the same ability, uh, the simplest abilities, from the most simple to the most complex. So the convention understood that people with disabilities have the rights. They have the same rights to decide about their own lives. So so the convention decided this. And the convention also understood that people with disabilities they have the same uh, capacity to uh, exert the rights. What, what are these rights? I'm going to give some examples, but there are many. One of them is to sign documents. Uh, so without anybody signing for them. And they have the same ability, they have the same right to sign the document. They have the right to use their own money. So people with disabilities here in Brazil says that they need a support person. They might need, it's not that it's necessary for them to have the support. But if they have some difficulty with any decision in their life, they need this kind of support. I'm sorry, just a second, I'm gonna check my slides.
I'm sorry, just a sec. Sorry, just a sec. All right, it should be okay now. I'm sorry. Sí, lo he puesto, pero no ahí pone interpretación. Le da U. Y ahí dale al español, ¿vale? Le... Ahí está. Dale a interpretación y al español. Y le he dado, pero y le doy al español. Aquí pone silenciar el audio y le he dado al español. Lo que pasa es que interpretación, a ver, voy a darle. Aquí pone arriba la interpretación. A They are just... Checking how to how the interpretation works. First, first of all, we're going to let Stephanie continue her presentation. Please, you let's just hear Stephanie. Okay, let's all silence our microphone and give the opportunity to Stephanie to continue with her presentation. Stephanie, you may continue, please. Okay, so here in Brazil, uh, decision making, we, we have the decision, supported decision making that is a person with a disability will choose their own support person. Sometimes we'll be one or two or three people, but someone of their trust. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, it, I'm still having some problems with the slides. They're not moving. Um, I'm sorry, just a sec. Stephanie, if you want, I can share your presentation and you just let me know when you want to change your slide and I will do it for you. If you I have your presentation so I can I can share my screen and then oh, I'll yes, just pass. yes, I would like that. You just say next one and I will pass it. Should I? Huh? Yes, thank you. Thank Next. You. That's much better. Thank you. So sometimes uh, they might be 
support person. It might be someone from your family or not. So, decision, supported decision making is someone of your trust. Some, someone you can talk to and have time to talk to and decide. So, when you buy a house, for example, the support person will be there for you to help you decide what is the best way to do it. This person is not going to tell you which house to buy. <laughs> the person who is going to decide that is yourself. Okay, next one, please. You can move the slide, Natalia. Thank you. Yes. So, it's a document that you can, you can choose other people as well. At least two people, but you can have one more. So it's a document that you use two people that will support you in any decision in reading or making which house you're going to buy or which decision, for example, where who you're going to vote for. Okay, next one, please. Uh, the next slide, please. So here in Brazil, we talk a lot about uh, legal capacity and supported decision making. But and at these two photos, I am in this event about legal capacity in 2018. Uh, there were many people all, from all over the world at this event because it was an international event. The next slide, please. Also here, I teach people with uh, disabilities about the supported decision making and about legal capacity. And we form groups with people with disabilities to talk about this. This is a meeting that I had with uh, people from my institute. And that we talked about the support decision making at the same time that uh, the convention came with these rights. And then we were teaching them about these rights and about the this legal decision making. Um, you can move to the next slide, please. So I, I will thank you very much for participating in here and having the opportunity to tell about the work I do here. And last year, we also did some work talking about the legal capacity. We formed a group uh, talking about what is voting or what is uh, what kind of decision you need to support person. And we also did a work in the elections, helping them which, which person to vote for. And we had a proposal for people with disabilities. And, and after we talked about, so we kind of did a simulation uh, in, the, in, the, in this group uh, to help them decide uh, which person they wanted to vote for. Um, so this is it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Stephanie. Does anybody have a question for Stephanie? No. No? Yes, I have a question. So that we can get more information. Could you share, please, both of your presentation, both the present Plena's presentation and Stephanie's presentation so that we can share it with all our colleagues and or our organization and also the recording, please. Okay. 
Thank you. We'll send. Yeah, that's okay. We'll send it to your emails later on. Stephanie, is it okay that we send your presentation? Oh, yes. Yes, if you have any other questions, you can get my email. I will answer you there. Thank you. Anna, your mic is silenced. Sorry. Okay. So, what do you think if we move on to the questions we sent you? Do you remember them? Shall I remind you? Okay. The first question is What work has your organization done on legal capacity and decision making? And do you have resources that you can share? Uh, yes. So here in Brazil, we also have a, a material that talks about capacity and supportive decision making. This material, we have it's in easy language, and I can share with you if you would like to. It's a written material. Yep, thank you so much, Stephanie. Luis also has his hand up. Go ahead, Luis. Well, hello, everyone. I also, in my organization, Sorry about the light. Okay, in our organization in Asdown, in Colombia, we also spoke with a bias organization that works on rights and legal capacity and everything that has to do with decision making and laws. And we have worked a little bit on this. We have even spoke in the uh, Congress in Bogota and we have shared in our social media quite a lot on all these subjects and Pais gave us the all the legal training on legal capacity and we have shared it all on social media so we have worked quite a lot on this already so if you want to learn a little bit about this, you can check out uh, in our web as down. Thank you. Thank you so much, Rhys. If there is any other material that you want to share, you can share it through the self-advocate email. I'm going to write my email in the chat so that you can all send me the material and we'll send it to everyone whose email we have. What do you think about that? Great. I think Ruth wants to comment on something. Go, go ahead, Ruth. Go ahead. Ruth is Johanna from Zambia. For the first question, you have been just intervening in small way on issues to do with the access to justice. Because we have no capacity, which is limited, but with this 
Por isso, o homem quer fazer um pensamento de saber e dizer as pessoas é gozanias por hábitos. A nossa ideia é que se bate na terra ou passe tudo de gogo, não passe de si. E desde não consistência e não se bate que não é o pensamento de intelecto disabilities to access justice. The, the, the judges are not have, have not been in court. They just hide the rights for persons with disabilities. Thank you, Ruth. Anna, Chantal has her hand up. Chantal, the floor is yours. Thanks to all. Hello to everybody. My name is Chantal and I'm, uh, I, I come from Benin. I'm very delighted to be with you this afternoon. It's uh, difficult uh, to explain what I'm doing here in Benin. Uh, but I work on the rights, uh, on the on the legal capacity of people, of disabled people. And um, for, for all disabled people, thank you very much for listening to me. Chantal, I have a question. What country are you from? Chantal, I have a question. What country are you from? Can't hear you, sorry. Chantal, can you hear us? Can you hear us, Chantal? Can you hear us, Chantal? Chantal, she's, she's from Benin. Where are you from? Ben, Benin. And then she's from Benin in Africa.
In the chat, there is a comment from Rodrigo Gil. It says, hello, I'm Rodrigo Gil from the Foundation Visibilia in Argentina. Here, everyone has legal capacity. Only a judge can say which things a person cannot do. And in that case, in the case that there's someone that can't do anything at all, they are under a kind of a guardianship, but that only lasts for three years. Then they have to have a meeting again with the judge and they will decide again. What type of support do you have in order to be able to exercise your legal capacity and take your own decisions? Who gives you the support? I would like to say, Natalia, can you hear me? I don't know how it is called, but for instance, I'm I have a legal capacity, but I don't remember this thing, but if something happens to me, if I'm sick, I cannot uh, get money from the bank, I can decide uh, who may uh, pick up some money from the bank on my behalf. How is that called? That's a person. Uh, but only in case you cannot do it. But uh, in your normal life, yes, I, I can do everything. I have a legal capacity. I don't. But do you need uh, support for things uh, in your daily life? Yes. Uh, and those supports are punctual and the people you choose, yes, great. Anybody else has uh, uh, support when they have to make a decision when or a uh, decision by the doctor or about money issues, about uh, where to live? My uh, supports are my trusted people, and, and now my supports are trusted people. It's not my family. For some situations, yes, but uh, normally it's not my family. I think that Raquel wants to tell us something. Raquel, the floor is yours. My case is different. My case is uh, I signed a paper and I have the support by a foundation. It's called uh, Tao and I have help for the uh, bank, the doctor, or whatever I need, and legal uh, proceedings issue. Uh, I went to a public notary and I signed that paper. Thanks, uh, Raquel, for. And Raquel, do you choose yourself, to, uh, your support? No, they give me the people that work as a support, they organize as a foundation, and they provide the supporting people. Yes, when you have a mother, you have a way, yes.
What would you like to decide yourself? Sometimes uh, somebody from Tao helps me, but others I choose, I decide myself because now I live with my mother uh, before where I was living in a flat. I needed more support. Now I live uh, with my mother and I have more freedom. Can tell you want to say something? Anybody else wants to tell us whether they have uh, support for the everyday lives? Jennifer, you want to tell us something? Uh, yes. Um, I have support for my family and, uh, yeah. And, like, yes. And my uh, friend Lisa and Marianne. Oh. Hello. Hello. Did I forget to unmute her? Oh. Jennifer, no se te escucha. We can't hear Jennifer. You. Jennifer, we can't hear you. Sorry. I have I have two brothers. They are younger than me and I have Can you hear me now? Yes, we hear you perfectly. Okay. I forgot I forgot to unmute myself. <laughs> okay. I have I am from Canada, Ontario. I have support from my two brothers. And uh yes. Yes, and um and my parents, I live with my parents, yes. And yes. Natalia, can I say something? Yes, but he, yes, here in Spain, when I go to Madrid, a big city, you can. You can also decide uh, people, supporting people. You pay for it. You can do that also through people uh, providing you the support. Through organizations, the other day, I came to Madrid by plane, and I don't know how to get to the train station, so I decided to have a support pe person uh, that helps me, uh, because otherwise I would have to uh, take a taxi, and that that's costly. So. With a support person, I can go to the metro and get to the station. I have done this several times, and the money I would spend in a taxi, I, I do this. Instead, I learned uh, the way to the station, and I feel pretty much better. Thank you, Anna, for telling us. Do you want to tell us what you're telling on the chat from Argentina?
Good evening. Juan's from Argentina. I'm Argentina. I'm a support person. He has uh, difficulties uh, with expressive language, uh, particularly now, so I'm going to help him. Here in Argentina, the figure of a uh, support person is not uh, legally considered. If you need it, you have to pay for it. Your family has to pay, and that makes it difficult. Otherwise, they are considered therapeutical uh, company, which is not the same. So we would like to know in your countries who uh, pays for these support people in your countries. Can you answer this? For instance, Anna was saying that she, when the when, when she lands at the airport, she needs a support person to get to the station. Who pays for that in Spain? Here in Argentina, it's very difficult. Some families can afford that, but others don't. Sorry, what does solventa means to, to, to pay, to pay, to, to solve? Myself, for instance, I paid uh, myself, but but other times when I need other support, I it's free for me because uh, others pay for it. But it depends. For instance, the other day I went to a meeting to, with Natalia, right, and Natalia was my support person. And in that case, it was uh, free. It depends on the... I, I, I don't know how to explain this. From Canada, she says that she has government support to pay for that. In Spain, there are different situations. One is the personal assistance figure. It's uh, written on the law. It's called facilitador, facilitator in Spain. No, it's not the same. Now I understand. Before I was into a personal assistance program and I, they would help me at home. Um, part of that was paid by the the federation, right, Natalia? When I was into a certain program, but it was only temporary. Yes, because you have to participate into uh, a project of Plena Inclusión uh, for the Castilla-La Mancha region in Spain. But are there are different things. One's uh, support to, uh, to fulfill uh, your legal capacity, and the other is the personal assistant. You, you also have a assistant for traveling by train. Then in Spain, it is uh, written on the law and it's paid services for people that have a legal recognition as dependent people. That's personal assistance. But a different thing is when I need support to 
uh, exert my legal capacity, those uh, support is not the same as personal assistance. It's different. The support Anna is talking about people for your daily life, about uh, getting money uh, or going to the station. Those are provided by either organizations or relatives, friends, closer people. You can also decide which support do you want, or you have the options to go to the court and the judge would uh, consider, we decide uh, which kind of uh, support or whether you are entitled to, the, to that support. We are lucky, we have pretty good services here, let's try to keep them. And yeah, and hopefully everybody, everything doesn't go to hell. And we need to make a good use of the services we have. Santi is speaking about the service, for instance. Uh, the train firms, the train companies offer you uh, people that will, will accompany you to uh, get into the train, to get out of the train, and so on. I use it a lot when I go to Madrid. Santi, those are the support, but it's difficult because sometimes uh, it's difficult to pick up the train and they help you a lot. Also, you have also people with disability at the... At the let's listen to... Can you please... Uh, Raquel, I don't see, I don't think that other countries don't have support because there has to be something. Spain should be, should have the same support as every other country. Because if a family cannot pay the support, what can they do? The kid needs help. Which kid are you talking about? No, generally any kid that needs support. Anybody, be it a little kid with disability. Sorry, because uh, it sounds uh, weird when we are treated like kids. No, it's about, in general, the past people. Josemi, you like to say something? Josemi. Aurora, forward. Yes, I would like to say something about support person. I spoke with the new politicians that are presenting themselves for the elections in the Basque country where I live. And one of the questions that I asked, it was, how would transport be for these people? Because the the support person for a person with disability still has to pay the ticket. And in Alaba, in the province where I live, 
we managed to get a free ticket for the support person. So I hope that both in Vizcaya and Guipúzcoa, the other two provinces of the Basque Country, will approve the same decision so that support people don't have to pay in public transport. This is very important. When we work in a foundation like ours, for example, we support, we request the support either to the city council or to some other administration, uh, some other institution, but public institution, but it is generally the city council that resolves this. Usually it is the city council or some other regional institution because someone that for example, do, doesn't has a pro, uh, has a problem with their hands. You are not going to give them a job, uh, for example, cleaning dishes because then there will be a problem with all the dishes; they will break. No, well, this is basically to say that city councils, in general, have taking care of this if somebody needs support for example for cleaning or cooking or for example cooking a lot of food and then put, putting it in the fridge so that somebody can after just heat it some other day this type of support it's usually the city council that gives it thank you so much Josemi. now jacinta hello hello well here we don't have too much problem with this either for transport with your support person they it is only one ticket not two tickets For they only pay one ticket when they're in public transport. They don't pay for them and the support person. And for example, if we want to do some kind of extra activity, the foundation helps us. This is what we would, this is what it should be in general. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much, Juan. Does this resolve your question? Okay, so after Jacinta, Mark and Fai have the floor. Uh, your mic is okay. You're muted, Anna. Sorry. Mark, you have the floor. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, okay. I have nothing much to share, but uh, for here, my colleague from Inclusion International have something to share with us. For here. Thank you so much, Mark, uh, for giving me the floor. Yes. Uh, thank you, everyone. I am Fayel from, I work for Inclusion International in the in the um, UK office for now, but then I'll go back home. I am a person who works with people with intellectual disabilities. I am a sibling to a sister with an intellectual disability. I am also a facilitator or an intermediary working in court uh, to support people with intellectual disabilities to access justice, and I'm a support person. Um, I am working on a research project aiming at um, 
understanding legal capacity from the perspective of persons with intellectual disabilities. So we are trying to look at the barriers to um, accessing legal capacity, um, the possible recommendations and solutions, and we're going to create some material from this. So this uh, session has been extremely beneficial for me. I think I have over 10 pages of notes, so thank you all so much. What I would love to ask is that I have created a focus group discussion PowerPoint that I would love to go through with um, whoever who would be interested from this group. So I will send over an email in the self-advocates group just to explain a little bit more about this research and to ask you all um, to please attend the focus group discussion when the day comes, just so that I may ask you some questions, some more questions, just like what you had here today, and that we can I can get some information from you. So the resources that we will maybe create, or hopefully we hope to create, are some, um, uh, we, we will create a policy paper, which is uh, like a legal document, um, so uh, it's 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 almost like a document that tells people how the situation is and what it should look like. We will also have a training manual, so something to support self-advocates. So it's an easy to understand, easy read training manual that will support self-advocates like you to train other people on legal capacity. Although, to be honest, I feel that you guys are great. Um, I've been in awe of the training that I've just attended right now. So that's really amazing. But Inclusion International will want to create these materials. It will also create a report that will be used as well to do advocacy and other um, issues pertaining to legal capacity. So I won't speak much. All I have to say is thank you so much for allowing us to be in this um session and kindly when I send over the email about attending the uh, attending the focus group discussion that you will avail yourselves um, so that we can talk a bit more and I can get a bit more information. So thank you all. I don't know if there needs to be any other clarification, but I appreciate the opportunity to speak with you all. Thank you. Mark? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much for the information and good work. Uh, we will be waiting for the email, for the email and more information so that yeah, cyberbookers can attend and um, yeah, come up with those papers. Uh, thank you very much and let me hand over again to Anna. Thank you so much, so much, everyone, for your participation today. Please remember that the next session is April 25th at 5 uh, in Spain. And we will speak about uh, sex, sexual health and reproduction. And we will have translation in Spanish, English, Portuguese, and French. Please tell anyone about these sessions, anyone you want, you can invite everybody you want because it's open and we will send you an email about the next session on sexual and reproductive health. And thanks again for being here. And as always, uh, we want to take a group photo, so if you can please show us your face, if you can put your camera on so we can take a group photo. Thank you. Thank you so much. And Anna, just a second before we leave, I think Antonio wants to say something also. He has his hand up. Antonio Fonswick. Please, you have the floor, Antonio Fonswick, you have the floor. You have the floor, Antonio Fonswick. You can speak, you have your hand up. You, you are silenced in your mic. 
microphone is silenced. Okay, now. Ok, saudações a todos. É um prazer o grupo de autodefensores de Angola está presente aqui neste, neste, nesta reunião. Somos gratos por serem os convidados. Sobre a capacidade jurídica, o que a minha colega queria aqui acrescentar é que em Angola estamos a ter muita atenção quanto aos apoiadores. Ainda há um apoiador para cada pessoa com deficiência intelectual, ou seja, para cada autodefensor existe um apoiador. Mas a experiência está a ser boa porque perspectivamos aumentar o número de apoiadores, pelo menos no mínimo ter um autodefensor, ter dois apoiadores. No caso de um apoiador tiver com uma eventualidade, tiver um outro que possa suprir. A questão também sobre os salários e apoios dos, autos, do, dos apoiadores é uma questão que está a ser feita de uma tramitação um pouco leviana, porque é, é algo que, deve, que deve ser tratado com muita cautela, porque se trata, de, se trata de subsídios que é dado para alguém ser financiado de um local para outro subsídio de transporte e também, às vezes, subsídio para levar alguma alimentação ou abrigos para a sua casa. Muito obrigado, era isto que nós queríamos falar. Muito obrigado. Saudações a todos e bom seguir a sua casa. Obrigado. Obrigado. Thank you, thank you so much. Obrigado. Thanks, thank you, everybody. And I would also like to thank the interpreters that are here, even if we don't see them. And today was really happy because we have an, the two interpreters here that have been together with us since the beginning in this group. 
and la the other day we missed them. <laughs> thank you, thank you, Raúl. Thank you, Ethel. Thank you. So see you the next session on April 25th. Mark will send you all the links and reminders. Maybe we can try and copy our system in some other country. They will try it. Yeah, the good thing is that we want we can learn the good practices in the different countries. This is great because if we can learn about what what other countries do permits us to continue advancing on our Please, sorry. We need to learn from each other and help each other because there are some countries that have less resources than others and depending on the country. Sometimes it's not necessarily money. Sometimes it's that they have different resources. Yes, and, in, and it's different. The governments are different in every country. So the resources are also different. So, well, basically, let remember that on the April 25th, we have the next session. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. 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 Bye.